So how's your quarantine partner doing? Mine's currently inside baking cookies and doing dishes. But in all seriousness, no. Uh, tomorrow marks not working for a whole month. And I'm going a little stir crazy. I didn't even know what day in the week it was. But, uh, yeah, I thought I'd get a lot more done on this, but no money for some of the things I need, like welding gas and lights and, and kind of makes you lose motivation. Especially since my motivation was uh, pulling the Suburban off the road and we decided to go camping May Long at McLean and haul it out there and give it a send out. Go bogging with it, whatever. If it breaks, it breaks. And then after that, pull insurance off of it and start rebuilding it. But with this uh, Corona stuff going on, there's an OHV ban, there's uh, campfire bans, Probably even a camping ban, I, I don't even know. Um, and we got no money to do it. And to save money, I pulled insurance off the Suburban already. So, there goes the motivation to get this thing done. But I'm going to keep trying to plug away a little bit here and there, I guess. You can only do so much without buying things for it. Yeah, so I need a way to hold this thing up without using the pulley block and winch because well that doesn't exist right now so I drilled the hole here tapped it and then on the other side I'm gonna chain through I like to go a little bit bigger on the bolt but 3 8 is what I got for now and it's the only drill bit I got it's the right size for a tap so uh, there's that I'm gonna run them up to there uh, that one's already there from when I bought it. I want to cut that in half, take the other half and bolt it on that side. But the bolt on that side's all jammed and mangled in there, so trying to get that out is going to be fun. Uh, and then that should hold this up. And eventually I want to weld around here as well. It's nice and solid. And uh, I want to put hooks on the end of those so I can adjust it. Got this side all uh, set up. Excuse me. Take two. <coughs> oh, fuck. Take three. Uh, okay, got this side all set up. Cut the chain down shorter so it's in half. Stole the hook from a different chain, plugged it on there. Not the chain for this side, but still got the pin in here from the pulley. It was wedged in. I managed to pry it out, but it doesn't come all the way out because it's got all this mechanism here. So I could always try to get the mechanism out, or I gotta just try to figure out a way to get that pen out because it is too fat to go through this chain. I'm going to get that out and then put like a motor mount bolt through there or something. See what kind of hardware I got. Managed to cut the other bolt out by only cutting a little, then spinning, then cutting a little, then spinning. Um, and I found this bolt. Uh, the only reason I know what it's from is because of the washers. The square washers here. Square-ish. That means... Uh, this is off of the IFS 
of my parts truck for the Suburban. So that'd be a control arm bolt or something. Um, it fits the chain nicely. Nice full size bolt. The only problem is trying to get it in there now. Because it don't fit in. So, bent this up with my uh, pin bar here. So that I can get a little bit better of an angle from underneath. Uh, the bolt was way too long. And I couldn't find the right size nut for it anyways because it's metric. Uh, so I cut it off, drilled a hole. I'm going to have a pin in there to make sure it doesn't slide out. Uh, hopefully we can put that in and then pry that back. And then we'll be golden. Just like this record deck. Ah, I'm, I'm hilarious. And voila! Adjustable chains for the boom. There she is, under her own weight. Starting to look like an actual truck. Uh, I mean, really, other than if I had welding gas to finish up welding everything, weld up there, uh, weld it to the frame, if I fixed the wheel lift, button up the wiring, threw some quick uh, lights in it, it'd be a functional tow truck. Minus the fact it doesn't have a motor. We'll, we'll ignore that part right now. So I guess I should move on to the uh, sling. Uh, there's not much that really needs to be done there. Except fixing this. I don't know what you have to do to do this. I mean, really when you pick up a car, this gets all pushed forwards. Um, I'm thinking between that and the broken off tow hooks. Here's one on this side. So between this and this, I'm putting together that somebody was yanking something out with this truck. Well, this deck when it was on a truck. That's my two cents. Uh, what actually happened, who knows. Okay, so started pulling that thing apart. It's the compressor that won World War II. Uh, Start taking the part to convert it into an air tank for the wrecker. And uh, of course I wanted to see why that thing started knocking. And to see what makes a, an air compressor uh, tick, so to speak. <laughs> so, I mean, I kind of figured how they worked. Um, and just kind of confirmed it. Got your intake, your exhaust, cylinder head, got your cylinder That's your baby piston in it it's got regular rings doesn't have a crank bearing though the cylinder comes off it's got a regular crank in it which I didn't find anything really wrong with this thing it actually looks all pretty good uh, did seem a little low on oil so maybe that's why it was knocking uh, didn't look too deep into it. I'm not gonna get into checking clearances and end play and could be one of those things. I don't care enough. Just was curious and it was like eight bolts to pull it apart. Uh, but I'm not really surprised how it works. After all, an engine is uh, just a big air pump, anyways. Like uh, there's actually even uh, people out there use small block Chevys. Uh, run on four cylinders and the other four compressors. So uh, the more you know Wow after scraping off probably 87 pounds of old grime uh, Turns out this thing actually is green. I Thought all my life it was black Um, you actually read some serial code stuff here um and I'm guessing, since this thing is green, um, that it was actually my grandfather's. I got it from my dad, but uh, it's been around ever since I can remember that my dad had it. So, uh, guessing at some point in the 90s, he got it from my grandfather. Because uh, he had his own company, as I've mentioned before, and... 
everything he owned was green. If you notice the workbench that I've been working on uh, some of my ancient stuff and a few of my videos, it's green. Um, and one of my childhood uh, little wooden Jeep things has the same wheels. I have them somewhere, so. I'm guessing this came from my grandfather. Um, especially since serial number says it was built in 1975. So it turns out this one did not win World War II. But still, what, 45 years old? Wow. Maximum pressure, 100 PSI. <laughs> I wonder if that's why it was knocking. This thing uh, regularly went up to 140. Huh. Stay tuned for our next video. We get uh, into some engine building. And it goes from uh, it's really good to really bad. Really fast. So, here's a preview. It's finally beautiful out. You know what that means? We can finally start putting the engine together for the dually. I dropped the crank. Smack talking. You all right, Mr. Squirrel? 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 When the first thing to come out and like attack me. That I'm waiting for this thing to come out and attack me. Me too. If you hear screaming like a little girl, it's me. <laughs>